With the help of Hashem, we are learning Tainus Daf Hey. We left off on Daf Hey Amid Aleph towards the top of the Amid by the Mishnah. We're going to begin learning in the Mishnah regarding the dates. Till when do we recite the request for rain? In other words, until when do we say the saying Talumatul of Racha? Truth be told that this Mishnah, this Machlik is Tanoim between Rabbi Yehuda and Avmeir, we just quoted above on the Abdallah Damit Beis. But that is going to lead us into a daf filled with Agadita. A lot of it is going to be conversations between Rav Nachman and Rabbi Yitzchak. And Rabbi Yitzchak's response to Rav Nachman will be quoting a teaching of Rabbi Yechanan. So we're going to learn a lot about the miracle that happened in the days of Yoel the prophet. After a seven year drought, how when it only began to rain in the month of Nisan, there was a miracle that happened and there was already produce early enough to bring the carbon oimer. But how we're going to learn more details about the rains called Yoira, about the rains called Malkoish, exactly when, when do they happen. A lot more of those rains we're going to learn also on Dav Vav, God willing. We're going to have many famous Agadites that we are familiar with. For example, that Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lai Avai B'Yerushalayim Shalmaila Acha Avai L'Yerushalayim Shalmata We're going to learn the concept that Ein Malchus Negas Bechaver Tafilu Kemeloi Nima And we're going to see how to a certain degree Shmuel passed away so to say, prior to his to the years that was designated for him, because David HaMelech had to become king. It's interestingly, we're not linking we're not linking the kingship of David with Shaul, but we are linking the kingship with David as a continuation of the great leadership of Shmuel the prophet. We're going to have the concept of Ein Masichin Basuda. A person is not allowed to engage in conversation during a meal. That was particularly true when people would be laying or reclining while they were eating. Interesting, a whole debate whether that Shaykh today when we sit, when we eat, will speak about this when we learn the daf. We're going to have the very great statement that Yaakov Avinu Loi Meis, Mazarei Bachayim, Afu Bachayim, and many, many other Beautiful Agadites, many of which we are already familiar with. Without any further ado, Chavra, let us start again on Daf Hey, Amadalov, all the way on top by the Mishnah. So the Mishnah now is asking, Ad Mosai Shrei Alam Esag Shamim. Until when do we request in the in the in the Barech Oleinu, the request for Wayne, which is how we articulated the same Talumatul of Racha. Being that rain during the summer in Eretz Yisrael, not only is it not a blessing, but it's the opposite of a blessing, so we certainly don't ask for it. So Rabbi Yehuda, Oimer, Ad Sheyavod HaPesach, until Pesach is over. And as we explained it, and that's the way it means, not the way we do it, that we stop requesting for rain. Well, like we learned in the last year by Rabbi Yechanan, the moment we stop mentioning rain, and indeed, we stop mentioning the rain, <clears throat> Musaf, the first day of Pesach. And therefore, had we have been davening the Shemayna Esrei, we taka would have gone over to the same Baracha right away, just during Yantiv, we daven the seven Baracha Shemayna Esrei. We daven the seven Baracha Amida prayer. And we begin saying the same Baracha already, the night going into Cholamoyed, not, not Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda holds that during Cholamoyed, we still say the same Talamot Lebracha. Only Matzah Yom Tov Pesach. <clears throat> then is it that we stop requesting for the rain? Rav Meir says we even continue saying the same Tal Amat Lebracha more. Rav Meir Oimer Achi Yitz and Nisan. We only stop the request until the whole month of Nisan went away. In other words, the night going into Rosh Chodesh Iyar. And why is that? Because since it says, and now recording a pasuk in Yoel that the Yoel did Lochem Geshem, and this is a prophecy of a, of, of a positive nature. That's after a terrible seven years of no, of no produce. That rain is going to fall. And here again, these are the words. Moira, Moira, or Yoira, refers to the first or early rains. And normally these rains, we're going to learn this more in Davov, either they are to begin in the month of Tishrei, or you can say they begin in the month of Cheshvin, perhaps even some of them are in the month of Kislev, but they are normally in the beginning of the winter. Malkoish is the name of the rains that come at the end of the season. Now normally Malkoish are rains that come in the month of Nisan. And indeed, so it says, Barishoin. 
happens just to be that this Pasuk is telling us that not only will the ge- reigns of Malkosh be in Nisan, this Pasuk is also saying that Moira and Malkosh will be in the month of Nisan, and that will be the opening to a lot of Agadatah. But the point of Rav Meir is, is that since the Pasuk says that the end of the rain seasons, the rains that we call the Malkosh rains, fall Bodishain, Bodishain is during the entire month of Nisan, so if the entire month of Nisan is the time for the, for the rains of Malkosh, so then we should continuously request for Malkosh until the end of the month of Nisan. Okay, so that's the Machlekes, Rabbi Yehuda and Rav Meir. Baruch HaTo Adino, Yelena Malachim, Shachon Libudvari. And now the Gemara is going to give us some background for this Pasuk. That Amalei Rav Nachman Le Rav Yitzchak. And th- that this will begin, Mamesh a whole daf of conversations or questions between Rav Nachman to Rav Yitzchak. And Rav Yitzchak responding, quoting Rav Yechanan. Yoyre, Benisan. How can this Pasuk say, Moira, meaning Yoyre, those rains are going to fall in the month of Nisan. No, Yoyde Bemar Cheshven Hu. And the Tanya, as we learn in Abraiz on Davov, that Yoyde Bemar Cheshven, that the rains that are called Yoyde are meant normally to fall in the month of Mar Cheshven. Let me just give, give everyone a heads up. Really, the early rains, the Yoyde rains, are, there are three rains included in the Yoyde rains. And that in itself is a machlek is between Tanoim. When is the first Yoda rain? When is the second Yoda rain? When is the third Yoda rain? Even the Tana Rabbi Yoisi that extends it the longest will only hold that the last of the Yoda rains should fall on Rosh Chodesh Kislev. But generally, those rains fall by Marcheshven. It's only the rains that we call Malkoish fall in Isen. Chevran Davov. Another thing, we're going to learn how the word Yoyda indicates early rains, how the word Malkosh re- refers to later rains. We'll get the understanding of the words next daf. But the bottom line is, is how can the Pasuk and Yoyal say that the rains, also the rains of Moira will fall, Barishon and Nisan? Ah, so that's the answer. Amalei, Hachi, Amar, Rabbi Yechanan. That indeed, normally the rains of Moira are not meant to fall in the month of Nisan. But that was a specific prophecy that came to fruition in the days Bimei Yoel ben Pesuel, the prophet. Bimei Yoel ben Pesuel neskai mikrozem. Then it was then that this pasuk was fulfilled. Tchsiv be. There we had the pasuk that sp- speaks about Yeser Hagazam Achalo Arba, that which the Gazam locust left over. In other words, there was years where locusts devoured the produce, followed by many years of drought. So in the beginning came the gazam, but they didn't eat up everything. And whatever they left over, then the type of locust that's called arba ate up. Then there were years of drought. Really, we'll see soon there was a total of seven years. Second white line. And at the end of the seven year, even during the beginning of the year, when normally rains will fall, there was vita no rain. However, oisashana... Yotza Adar Veloyordu Gishamim, which is a disaster because that was already the end. And what happened was that Yordo Lahem Revia Rishoina Beechad Benison. Finally, the first Revia, Chevre Revia, is a word that we give for a rainfall. Now, as we'll learn again on Davov, that Revia is Miloshin to copulate. And as we'll see, many types of uh, comparisons between the relationship between a husband and a wife and the rain falling on the earth which leads to to the earth to the to the earth to sprout forth produce so it's called the so yor the lem revia rishayna be'echad benisim om alem navili yisrael and then yoyel told the yidin so viziru go and plant now chavra we we're city people you have to understand that they would plant with the kerners, kernels, with grains that they could have used to eat. The grain was worth more than its weight in gold. It was seven years of no food. So when you have a few kernels left, and your mamish needed to survive, now of course, when you plant it and it rains, then one kernel produces many. It's a great investment as long as there's no drought. Only one rain fell. Uh, that's after seven years. So Alpidera Chateva would be mamish suicide to go ahead in the month of Nisan to begin the process of growing grain. You begin that in the month of Cheshven. 
Some people began Anach at the end of the month of, of Tishrei. So Yoel tells the Yidin, no, ah, it's raining, go and plant. So Amr Eloi, so the Yidin first responded, Mish, Yesh, Kav Chitim. The lucky few people that have a, a Kav, a certain measure of wheat kernels left, or Kabayim Soedim, or two Kavs of Soedim. So they have a choice to make now. Either Yechlenu Ve'yichya, that's all the food they have. They have to stretch it until the next year. So either they can use that to eat and to live, or Yizre'enu Ve'yamu, should they plant it? And, and, if, and if there won't be additional rains and miracles, so it's going to rot in the ground. They'll lose the few grains that they have. So they challenge the Navi, and he tells them, Afal Pikain, Tzu'u Viziru, and Nasu Lehem Neis. And according to many, what happened was, is that after they decided to listen to the Navi, then a miracle happened. And what is that? When Lehem, God revealed to them, that there were some few kernels that the mice, Rashi says, hid in the walls. They found it. They found in ant holes a couple of additional kernels. And therefore, when they planted that which they had, until the miracle, the miracle happened in a few days, until it grew extraordinarily quickly, swiftly, they lived off these new kernels that they found that no one knew existed in the walls and in the ant holes. And indeed, Yatsu they went, Vizoru, and they planted on the second day of the, of the month of Nisan, and on the third day, and on the fourth day. And really, the Marsha says, Chavir, we learned this in Rosh Hashanah, really they planted right away. Remember the whole sugya that when you begin counting the days towards the end of the year, that you can say, ah, this amount of time is Chosh of Kishana, first it has to take root. The grains take three days to, to, be, to, to take root. So they planted right away, but it took number two, number three, number four, for it to be considered planted. That is when it took root. And then, the second rainfall. These are rainfalls that normally fall in Cheshven. It fell on the fifth day of Nisan. And, and what happened was, is that from these two rains, the produce grew in 11 days to the point that he krivu oimer b'shisha aser benisa and there was enough of the barley that grew for us to have. It's not just for us to have what we need to offer the carbon oimer, but there was enough produce for everyone. So Nim says kumtais that that year tfua higdila tfua that normally will take six months to grow, it grew in those miraculous 11 days. And therefore, and that year, and it was regarding this generation, that miracle. And we say this to a capital the whole time, Right, before benching when there's no tachnun. That regarding that event is where we say that hazoyim bedima berino yuktsoyru. It's a machayit to understand historically what this refers to. You know, it's hazoyim bedima. What was the dima? Because we were davening when we were planting it. It was an act of faith. The few grains that we had left to plant after seven years drought. So what? That one rain fell. The rain fell way too late. It's not enough time for it to grow. When you, you plant in Chesh, when you don't plant in Nisan. But the Navi said to do it. So these are tears of faith. And you know what happened? Berina Yitzayru. And then the Pasuk continues that Holoich, Yeleich, Uvachai. Right? That it, those were walking and weeping. Noisei Meshech Hazara, they were bearing. The Meshech means the container of the seeds. And now let's go right to the Agada Tamai, Holo Chelo Chuvacha, Noisei Meshech Vegoimer, Omar Rebbe Yehuda, that Shor Kishu Chayresh, Holo Chuvacha, that the ox that was going, the ox also sensed this is the end of his food as well, but they're planting it. But he was going back and forth. That you know how quick it began to grow. That when he went in one direction of the furrow, when he began to go back, already the, the beginning, the spread, the green sproutings of the grains were already there for the ox to eat. That shoid was already oichel chazes minatelam was eating the newly sprouted green that came out of the furrow. In other words, there was some sort of miraculous event where everything was expediated in a tremendous way. 
And that's the Vizel Boy Yavoy Birino. That was the Dino. There was joy by people, there was joy by the animal kingdom. Now the ending of the Pasik says, My, what's the Agadic meaning of Noise Alumaisov, those who were bearing or were carrying the sheaves, Amar Abchizda, or Amrila, the following statement was to be Masnisa Tana, was taught in Abraisam, that what? There was another miracle. That if the Kana, if the stalk of the grain, the stalk Hevre is the garbage of the grain. And at the end of the stalk, on the top, you have what we call the, the Shiboilus, or you have what you call in English the ear. In the ear is where you have the grain. Now the normal ratio is that there's a lot more not good to the good. There's a lot more uh, 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 there's a lot more kana than the uh, shibolus. It's three or four times more the stalk than the ear of grain. There, the ear of grain was double the shibolus. That kana was if the kana had the height of a zeris. Chavre, the zeris is a hand span. A hand span. You know, is if you open up your hand and you measure from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb, right? A zedis is a half of an amma. Two zedis in is exactly one amma. You can measure it out on your amma yourself. So, anyways, if the shibo, if the if the stalk was a zedis, so then the the, the shibolus was double the size, was two hand spans. It's, it's moiradik. You know, there was there was double the amount of good and bad instead of the other way around. And that's the Noisei Alomoisov. Maybe every kernel was like a sheaf. Here we go with the pictures. So that's normal. And imagine if the ears is double the size of the Shiboilus. You have a lot of grain. Again, Rav Nachman is asking Rav Yitzchak, what's the meaning of the Pasik? And this is regarding the same lead up to this event of the drought. Kikara Hashem Lerov, that God called out, uh, sadly, that He decreed that there's going to be a famine. The Gambo Allah audits, and it's going to come to the land, totaling a, a seven years. Now, really, it wasn't seven years of drought, but first, like we mentioned, there were of three years, I think, that there was a lot of locusts, so the earth was producing because there was rain, but it was being consumed by locusts, and then it was followed by a four year of drought. So, Bahanach Shavashon Mayachol, how did they survive seven years? Amalei, to which here Rabbi Yitzchak is quoting Rabbi Yechanan. Hachi Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Shana Rishayna Ochlo Mashu Babatim. People have a reserve; they have food in their houses. Shni on the second year they ate Mashu Basadis, which is also normal. You know, when you harvest, when there's plenty and some kernels fall down in the field, you leave it in the field. You have Bachlal, you have you have you have that which grows from dropped seeds, so they ate that. Shlishis, once that was completely out, it was completely consumed, so they had no option, they needed to live off meat. Shlishis, basar, behemoth, trahira, but they were eating kosher. At the end of the third year, there was no kosher animals to consume. And don't forget, however, that living beings, the animals were also dying from the drought. Reviz, basar, behemoth, they began to eat non kosher food, non kosher meat. In the fifth year, basar, shkotsam, viramasam, they began eating um, creeping things. Like the Chinese, shishis, this is tragic. There was nothing left to eat, and they began to eat psar b'nei mubnei seim. They ate up their children. Shvis, on the seventh year, they began to eat their own arms. Psar zeroi oiseim. That's, how, that's what famine does to people. We should never know of that. L'kayim ha'shenemar, and that was the fulfillment of the prophecy regarding such hunger that ish psar zeroyo yoichelu, that each man will eat the flesh of his own arm. There's nothing else to eat. And imagine the few people that had a little bit of kernels left and Yoel told them to plant it, the emuna that they had when they planted it. And the phenomenal miracle that came out. V'omar lay Rav Nachman l'Rab Yitzchak L'choyra, again, we're learning um, on, the, on the superficial level, all of the following statements share at least the commonality that this is questions that were asked from Rav Nachman to Rabbi Yitzchak, and he quoted the Rabbi Yechanan to, to answer. My dear Siv, what's the meaning of the Pasuk? Which Mamash doesn't make sense. The Pasuk writes that Bikir Kadosh, God is saying that I see holiness amongst you, but I'm not going to enter the city. Now, normally it should be that if God sees something unholy, then, God forbid also, Hashem can say, I'm not going to enter. Even though Hashem can eat on betoich to Muslim. But here, it's like the opposite. But if God sees that amongst us there's Kedusha, God is not going to enter the city. 
So And let's go back to what we learned before, that there's a lot of tzadahs during Golos. And Amar Hakadosh Baruch Hu that lo yavoi be Yerushalayim shall mailon bekir bechal Kadosh refers to Yerushalayim shall mailon, and the, you know, and Hashem nevertheless chooses not to go into Yerushalayim shall mailon at she yavoi Yerushalayim shall matom until the the Shechina comes back to this world over here. That's the pshat of Shechinta bigalusa. In other words, lest you think perhaps that we're learning all of these terrible calamities that happened to the Jewish people, we should understand that that Hashem was in the tzara. And the more we suffer, the more God suffers. Hashem only takes away His own suffering when we are no longer suffering as well. Now, what's the meaning? Is there some, something called Yerushalayim Lamaila? Yes, in the Chsev it says, Yerushalayim Abnuya. The built up Yerushalayim, Ki'ir Shechubra Lo Yachdav will be like the city which is joined together with it. So what's that joined together with it? It means that there's many Yerushalayims and every world is Yerushalayim. And in the higher worlds, the Beis HaMikdash is standing and Yerushalayim is built the way it should be. And, when the, and, 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 and the, the coming of Mashiach will mean is that in this lowest of worlds, we're going to finally rebuild the Beis HaMikdash and the, and the real Yerushalayim Shalmata. And then each world will be connected to the other, as explained in greater detail in Tanya Perek Nun Beis, Tanya Perek Nun Gimel. What's the meaning of the Pasuk? Uva'achas yiv'aru ve'yichsolu That they are all together uh, senseless, and they are uh, stupid, and Musar Havalim Eitzu, and the rebuke of vanities somehow is like wood. In other words, the pshat will be that when you rebuke someone who's who's senseless, so it's in vain. It's like you're rebuking wood. That's the pshat. But what's the drush? Amalei Hachem Rabbi Yechanan that Achasi. There is one. Core reason that causes Rishoyim to go to, to, to Gehenna. In other words, there is one, one, one mistake that brings about the seal, that brings about foolishness and stupidity and makes us like wood that we are unable to hear Musar. And my ye, what's the one foolishness? Wood. Wood meaning Avaidazara. Or like it says, Ksivachim Musar Avalamaitsu. And it says over there, he, Hevel, Hema, Maisa, Tatoyim, right? That, um, so you see that, that Hevel, Maisa, Tatoyim, actions that are of, of deviation refers to Avoy the Zara. And we call that Hevel. And in this Pasik, it says Hevel, the first Pasik, in other words, Avoy the Zara, which is the belief, right, that there is some Koyach other than God. That leads to all the other mistakes. And we're in the opposite, that the more a person accepts the emes of Hashgach pratis, not only that there's a God in the heavens, but there's one God everywhere, and everything is under His dominion, that will ultimately lead us out of all of our narashkait. What's the meaning of the Pasik? For my nation has committed two evils. So the question is, Okishtais Rois Osa Ami. End of end of, end of Pasik. My nation committed two evils. The last line in the Amit. Tartuhu Dahave, what we committed only two evils. Esramba Arba Shivikaluhu, we ignored the 24. What's the 24? It actually writes that there are 24 books in scripture. There are 24 Svatim of the whole Tanakh. And uh, there were times that we abandoned all of it. And yet God considers us to only have abandoned, to only have committed two evils. And we're coming back to the same Nakuda, that all of the sins stem from the lack of belief in Hashem Echot. And Hashem Echot, the way Hasidus explains Hashem Echot, that everything is Ashgach Pratis. So, and that's called, we committed two evils. Now, why is that called two evils? Faket, let's go back to the first passage that we just quoted. Uva Achas, one, Avoid Zara. Avoid Zara, the disconnect from God leads to all else. All else that's not good. So why is it here called two? So Amar Rabbi Yechanan, it's taka achas, it's one's transgression. Again, the denial of God present in my life, that hey Amit Beis. But when I walk away from God and when I attribute power to power to where power doesn't exist, so I committed really two evils. 
In other words, the walking away from Hashem and by imbuing or by attributing power to anything other than God. So it's really a dual mistake. There's one sin, which is Avayda Zara, which is Shkula Kishtayim. And why, what is that? That's Avayda Zara. No, it's God says, you abandon me and you chose something else. So there is the, the abandonment of God, and then there is the choosing something which Taka has no power. Nothing has power. Not another person has power. Not another, nothing. There's only God. The Chseva, as it says, Kishtayim Rois Asu Ami. And you read the Pasuk. Oisi, Izvu, you abandoned me. And who is the I? Says God, I am the Mekoyer Mayim Chaim. I am the source of the living waters. So the walking away of Hashem is the number one. And where did we go to? That we hewed out, we created for ourselves cisterns that are broken. Instead of going to the right well, to Mayim Chaim, walked away from that and then we gave something which is not Mayim and it's not Chaim and we consider that something which it is not. And similarly, Oksiv Buhu, it says regarding the mistakes in the past when we walked away from the Emuna and the Betachin and the understanding of not only of one God but an Achtus Hashem, etc. It says, Ki Ivru Iye Kitim. Ki Ivru Iye Kitim means when you will go when you will pass over the islands of the nations called the Kittim, you will see, and the Kedar Sholchu, and when you will send to the nation of the Kedars, these Boinen Umaoi, then you will be misboinen diligently, contemplate on those two nations, and you will realize that Hahemir Goi Elohim will a nation change their Elohim with the hey because their Geshka, they have wrong, a wrong understanding of the Amos. And yet they don't leave, they don't abandon their God. And even though they Eloi Elohim. So the people that don't have the truth, they have, they have something that's false, they don't abandon their false. But Va'ami, Hashem complained in the past, Hamir Kavoidoi, we exchanged God's glory Below oil to that which ha- which is of no help, and why did we pick Dak? Why does the pasuk in Yirmiyo pick these two nations of the Kitim and the Kedarim? Because Tanim, we learned in the that the Kutim, their uh, their god was fire. They considered fire the ultimate power. The, the, the Kedarim, they worshipped water. Oh, so why did he point out people who make uh, fire into a god or make water into god? What we think God is the, the God of love. And today, everything is love. The biggest thing that people are love, that's the Western Avoid uh, Zara. Or you have the, the other nation. Everything is Gevura. Everything is justice. That, that's the ultimate everything. The AFLP is this justice that's not godly justice. The AFLP, even though Shiyoidim, the Kutim, know that the waters put out fire. So they know that their God is vulnerable. Yet, Veloyimiru Eloyheim. They never abandoned it. That's the, they know, no, fire is God. That's the ultimate. The water is God. And Hashem complained, So Avoid Zod is considered one, but it's considered two. Because that's the way it is. When people, you know, There's so many rules in the Torah. Yeah. But when you abandon, when a person, God forbid, thinks that they want to remove the yoke of the Torah, the way it is, no one is free. There's no such a thing as fry. The only question is, what are you going to serve? So serving God brings about the best freedom. It actually affords us most freedom. When people abandon the, the, the emes, what happens is they become meshubed to many more parois. They become meshubed to things that are terrible. So they committed the double crime. They, they, they abandoned God, but they ultimately they will give something other than God, some sort of false godly What's the meaning of the Pasuk? Came to pass that Shmuel was old. Now Shmuel, even in the times where people did not live as long as people are living today, we know that Shmuel lived 52 years. 52 years, 52 years was not considered old. He was never old. He lived 52 years. The Amar Maras, the master taught us, and we'll learn this in Moed Katan, that Shmuel passed away, Benun Beishana. Zeomisos, Eshe Shmuel Aromasi. 
So how can the Pasuk call him Zakein? So Amar Le. So Rabbi Yitzchak responds, Hachi Amar Rabbi Yechanan, this is what Rabbi Yechanan says, that Zikna Kofza Olaf, that old age came suddenly upon Shmuel, says Rashi here, that he very quickly turned white. He wanted vice, but quick, not slowly. So he looked very old. And why did Hashem make it that Shmuel looked very old? Hashem wanted for people, knowing that Shmuel passed away, to think that Shmuel was old. And this is the background story. First of all, it says that shortly after Shaul was reigned by, by Shmuel, after Shaul HaMelech made the big mistake of not fully following the word of God with all the good intentions, don't forget that Shaul was Mishich Mayul Amayla Mikolam. Shaul had the purity of a two year old. And Kolo Emer Shaul Chata Eino Yalotoya. You have to be careful, we're speaking about Big Tzadik. Nevertheless, Shaul on his level made a mistake by not kill, killing Agag, by not killing the mate of Hatsoin. And the words that Hashem said to Shmuel was, Nichamti, Kaviyochel, I regretted, Ki Imlachti Yesho. And when God said those words, what really Shmuel understood is that Shoal, who ended up being a king for two and a half years, would not have lived those two and a half years. Shoal, after that mistake, was going to pass away right away. And Shmuel did not want for that to happen. So Amr Lofanov, so Shmuel, hearing from God the words Nichamti, understanding it means that Shoal's life here is coming to an end, says, Reboina Shaloilam, you shekaltani kemoyshe ve'aharon. You equated me, Shmuel, like Moshe and Aaron. Dixiv, it says, and we say this right every Friday night, to heal him, Moshe v'aharon v'choyhanov. They're put together that amongst the Koyhanim, amongst the priests of God, is Moshe and Aharon. And then Shmuel stands by himself. And Shmuel are amongst those who call out God's name. It was the fact that Moshe and Aaron, an attribute, Shmuel, another attribute, is an ayah that on a certain level, Shmuel is like Moshe and Aaron. So therefore, says Shmuel, Ma Moshe vi Aaron le botlu ma ase yedeim bechayehem. Rashi says that means that Yehoshua, who we know to be the Talmud of Moshe, we also know that Yeshua is a Talmud of Aaron. As we have, Rashi quotes it in, in, in Chumash, the whole Seder of how Moshe Rabbeinu taught the Torah. Right, he came, he taught it. Everything was taught four times. So Moshe Rabbeinu taught it first only to Aaron. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, then after he taught it to Aaron, then came in the so the, 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 B'nai, the Nod of an Aviyu. Uh, I'm sorry, a Lazar and a Samar, the sons of Aaron. And they, and they heard the Torah again from Moshe. And then came in the Zekanim. And then came in all of the Eden. And after Moshe Rabbeinu taught it four times, Moshe Rabbeinu left the tent, remember, then Aaron began to teach. Point is, is that Yeshua was sitting there and he heard the Torah from Moshe and from Aaron. So what happened is, is that since Yeshua was, they understood their continuation, the Marsha says, maybe this refers to Eliezer, the son of Aaron, but whoever was going to give continuity to Moshe and Aaron outlived Moshe and Aaron. No, it's they were made. Who made Yeshua? Let's go with Rashi. Moshe and Aaron, they taught him. So the Talmud outlived the teacher. It's amazing how Shoal considered Sho, Shmuel considered Shoal the one who he made because he appointed him to be king. So he says, by Moshe and Aaron, loy botlu The Rebbe's outlived the Talmud. Moshe and Aaron predeceased Yeshua. Imagine if Yeshua, God forbid, would have passed away in the life of Moshe and Aaron. The pain that they would have felt that they made him and then the end is not here. So Afani, he asked Hashem, Lo yizbatl Don't allow for Shoal to die in my lifetime. It's amazing. Now, Omar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I'm going to grant your request, but hold on, this is the issue here. Hechi Avid. It's amazing how the Oibishter speaks it through with Tzadikim. We have this in the Chumash with Avram Avinu, but here you have it by, by Shmuel. So, Leim was Shaul, for Shaul to pass away, no, Leik Shavak Shmuel. Shmuel doesn't want him to die, Hashem is going to honor Shmuel. So, now, all Sh- what Shmuel said was, I don't want Masi Yodai, Shaul, to pass away in my lifetime. So here, there's another solution. What's the other solution? That Shmuel should predecease Shaul. No, Shaul should pass away, but prior to Shaul, Shmuel should pass away, but Shmuel was young. 
Leim or Shmuel at the Zutar. So Shmuel should pass away young. Young meanings that every person is given a certain amount of time. Atahe should pass away earlier. And he's going to pass away now. Then Meran and Abasre. People, when they see that someone it passed away so young, maybe he sinned, maybe he did something wrong, they're going to begin to malign Shmuel. Okay, then the solution is, so no one should pass away, invite it. Loy lemo Shaul, the loy lemo Shmuel, that can't be. Why? Because they, there's going to be a time, taka not right then, but uh, two and a half years after the reign of, of Shaul, David HaMelech's time will come to reign. Kvarigia Malchus David, at a certain point. And once it's the time for Dabar HaMelech to reign, ve'ein malchus noigas bechaverta filu nima. And when one is meant to reign, and there's only one leader to a generation, Dabar echad ladoir, Rashi writes, v'loi shnei dabarim. So one comes when the other one leaves. So why therefore, first of all, Shmuel's tefillah helped. Shmuel's life was extended a little bit. But when the time of Dabar HaMelech will come, what Shmuel asked for will come. Shmuel is going to pass away. So Shmuel won't see the passing of Shaul. Shaul is going to pass away and David is going to become king. But even now, but the problem we said before is, is that Shmuel is going to pass away young. People are going to start thinking, why did he pass away young? Maybe, maybe Shmuel was not the big tzaddik that we thought that he is. So during a very short amount of time, he aged. In other words, he began to look very old. And that's the pshat that the zikna comes to Olaf. So Amar Hakadosh Baruch Hu akpits Olaf zikna to make him look like a very old man. And then that was the seder. And the seder taka was that Shaul lived more than Shmuel. Shmuel passed away the first, so he didn't see how his masayadai Shaul passed away in his lifetime. Shaul passed away, and David became the king. And Hainu Dechsev, it says that Shaul was sitting in Giva. Give us the name of a location. However, we know Giva just now was in the territory of Binyamin. Then it says, where was he sitting? Be Giva Tachas Ho Eishel Berama. Under Eishel means a tree, with all the other uh, agadites regarding but Avram Avinu's Eishel. Right? So, and he was sitting under the Eshel in Ramah. Now guys, Ramah is in Ephraim. We know that. It doesn't make sense. Shol was sitting in the Yaman or is he sitting in Chelek Shol Ephraim? That why was Shol still alive? Shol lived in Giva. Binyamin. Right? We learned, what was that? Yesterday, Shol ben Kish, or two days ago. Eloma, why did he live another two and a half years? Because of the tzaddik, the Eshel means a tzaddik, because of the tree that is Haramasi. Shmuel Haramasi was the one that gave him security to continue living, and he taka lived in, 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 in Givam. Givaldik. Point is, is that because of Ein Malchus, Negas Bechaverta, I feel like Nima, that based on the premise that there's only one real leader to every generation. And when the time of the new leader to come, the old leader can no longer be here. And that even means that really Shmuel was given more years of life. But his life was shortened ultimately because of this concept that someone's time came. So does that mean that one person pushes away another person out of this world? Is there such a thing? So the Gemara says yes in the Amar of Shmuel ben either Amar Ab Yonason, or we have in the parentheses Amar Ab Yechanan, that my Dechsev, What's the meaning of the Pasik? That Al Kain Chotzafti bin Avim, that I have carved out my words through the Nevim, and Haraktim be Imrefi, and I killed them with the words of my mouth, killing them with the words of my mouth. If someone misbehaves and they die prematurely, so that's called they got killed because of their actions. The Pasik is speaking talk about Nevim. But sometimes a Navi passes away young, not because of anything wrong that he did, but because of a divine decree. And the, in our case, the divine decree was not personal against Shmuel. There was a general decree that Hashem makes, and that is that Ein Malchus Nagas Bechaverta Nima. When someone's time is to rise up and to become the Nasi Hadoid, then the prior Nasi can no longer be here. And because of that rule, Shmuel passed away. Ella Be'imrefi. And to the point, Alma, that mitchi gavra mikam gavram. Let's go weiter. Says the Gemara. Rav Nachman ve Rav Yitzchak havu yosvi besu dasa. 
they were once eating together. Again, Rav Nachman is like the Talmud here. He's asking Rabbi Yitzchak, Leima Mar Milsa, during the meal, say some Dvar Toirom. So Amale, to which Rabbi Yitzchak responds, I'll tell you what Dvar Toirom. Hachi Yom Rabbi Yechenon, Ein Masichen Basudam. My Dvar Toirom is, you're not allowed to talk during the meal. Now, this is almost a, make everyone smiles. Mimonat Shach. You know, so how can you even say that? So let me say like this, that they used to eat reclined. And now we learned the details, we know this from uh, Pesach, many people are familiar that there's reclining on the left side, reclining on the right side. That affects the danger regarding if the food, God forbid, will go down the windpipe. They were eating in a way that the real Sakana no longer existed. So which is why Rav Nachman thought that when people used to mamish recline, and when you're laying and you're eating and talking, there's a danger. Rav Nachman knew that. They were like sitting, more or less the way we sit. And he felt that there's much lesser of a danger. And there is taka much lesser of a danger. That, that, that Rabbi Yitzchak responded, He was not afraid to respond that. But what he's telling him is, is that even though there's much of a lesser danger today, speaking while we are eating because of the way we sit, still, nevertheless, ain't masich and basuda. And shema yakdim kone leveshet. Because the windpipe can precede the esophagus. In other words, when a person is talking, so whatever covers the windpipe, right, Dr. Baruch, however that works, if, the, if what closes the windpipe opens up because you're talking, so the breath is coming out, at that moment, some food, God forbid, can go down the windpipe. And So it wasn't dangerous enough not to be allowed to make that statement, but uh, until today, while you're chewing and eating, don't talk. But Basar decided, but after he finished eating, they're not sitting by the meal, it's before benching. The importance of saying Advar Torah by a meal is understated. But two things are important, to say Advar Torah and to sing a Negan. So Amalei, so what does he tell him? Hachi Yom Rabbi Yechanan, Yaakov Avinu Loi Meis. Yaakov Avinu did not pass away. Wow. He made us a statement. Amalei, so Rav Nachman asks Rabbi Yitzchak, well, how can you say that? V'chi, how many times did we hear this? B'chdi, softu, saf, fondaya. Did the eulogizers eulogize Yaakov in vain? As we read in the Chumash that he was eulogized. Was it v'chantu, chanitaya? Was it in vain that they embalmed Yaakov? It's more than in vain. If he was living, then oigavalt. V'kavru, kaveraya? Was it in vain that they buried him? All of these things are mentioned in Negea Yaakov Avinu. Amalei, to which Rabbi Yitzchak responds, all quoting, Rabbi, uh, explaining Rabbi Yechanan, that Mikra Ani Doidish, I'll expound the following Pasuk Shinemar, as it says, Va'ata on you, Al tira ya avdi Yaakov no Hashem, don't be afraid, my Eved Yaakov, says God, Va'al techas Yisrael, don't break, don't tremble, why is that? Because, because I will deliver you, even when you are far away, and the Ezarech and I will deliver your children from the lands of their captivities. So here we have a Pasik that's speaking both to Yaakov and to the Jewish people. So Makish Hu Lizaroi. So here we are comparing Yaakov to his descendants, and we are his descendants. And what's the Hekish that Ma Zaroi Bachayim? Ah, Fu Bachaim, just like his descendants, when the moment of salvation will come, when Mashiach will come, Mashiach is coming to redeem us here, living. Yaakov is living as well. Let's read inside Rashi. Very powerful words. It says Rashi, Mazare Bachaim, meaning that Keshuhu Mekabetz es Yisrael, when Hashem will gather the Jewish people, Me'eret Shivyam, from the land of their captivity. So who does God gather? Kibbutz, gathering, doesn't mean to move the cemeteries and the remains of the people that were buried. That's not called Kibbutz Goliath. Hachayim umakabitz. Because only living people are b'shevi. Shahamesim enum b'shevi. You can't use the words captives if the person already passed away. So Hashem is going to be redeeming the livings. Af hu b'chayim. Says Rashi that sheyivienu b'goylo. God is bringing Yaakov into Golos. Living Yaakov. Why? So when Hashem will redeem the Jewish people, Yaakov will witness it with his eyes. Where it says, Vayari Yisrael. 
that Vayad Yisrael Asiyad Agdeila doesn't only mean the Jewish people. It means that Yaakov saw Vidarshinon Yisrael Sava that our Zaydi Yisrael Take. I'm reading it Sanash the Chantu Chanotayim that they embalmed him. Why did they embalm him? Because Nidmo Lehem Shemes. It looked to, uh, to us that he passed away. But really, Avol Chai Hoyo, he was really alive. Mazar Bachayim, Afu Bachayim. How great is that? Oh, so now that we introduce the concept that when Zaro is Bachayim, Afu Bachayim, Behem Shechlo Zamamish, Omar Rabbi Yitzchok, Kol Ho'emer Rachav, Rachav Miyad Nikrei. Rachav was the woman that helped the spies successfully. Um, not only spy out the land, but make it back. She also eventually, right, what's the, she married, she converted, and I think Yeshua married her. And uh, Rachav was one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. So says Rabbi Yitzchak that whoever says her name, not once, but twice, will have a seminal omission. So Amalei Rav Nachman, no, I'm not Amina, what are you talking about? I said Rachav Rachav and nothing happened. Now hold on. Here the same question. If Rabbi Yitzchak is saying that whoever just says the name of this woman twice will, 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 will become as they aroused, then how can he have said it? Oh. So Amalei, so to which Rabbi Yitzchak responds that Kiko Amino, what I meant to say is Biyoida Obi Makira, someone who intimately knew her before. Recognizes her. Right? And then you have Nachu Maskira Shema. That if someone who knew her will speak her name, it's going to be as if she's there. And being that she was that beautiful, then Miyad Nikre. In other words, the, the, the concept, I think it's Mamash Behem Shech that we have the ability of living, let's go on the positive, that when we have a tzaddik, that even when we cannot see the tzaddik, we have the ability to remember the tzaddik. But it has to be biyoidu b'makira. We have to be connected to the tzaddik. We have to be following the directors of the tzaddik. And then there are mamish here. And the fact that that person has on us will mamish continue the same way. Okay, now, ki have a So a lot of conversations between Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Nachman. And at some point, they were parting it. They had a meal together. They had a lot of questions. So Amalei, so again, Rav Nachman is the student. Rav Nachman is telling his teacher, Rav Yitzchak, Livor Chonmar, Master, please give me a bracha. Amalei, to which Rav Yitzchak responds to his student, Rav Nachman, Em I'll give you an example to what this scenario was compared to. Imagine there's a person going in a desert. In a desert, and v'hoyeroyev, he's starving. V'hoyev, and he's tired, he's exhausted. V'tzami, and he's thirsty. And a miracle happens. V'matzei ilan, and he finds a tree, nishtama tree. But shepeiroyes of mesukin, that the fruits are very sweet. V'tziloy noe, and the shade is azoy pleasant and cool. V'amas hamayim overes tachto v'nach. There's a stream of water under that tree. And this person, Amachaya, he found life. Achal mi peroisov, he ate the fruits, vishasam himov, and he drank the waters, its waters, vishasha betsiloi, and he sat and he rested in a shade. Ukshebike shleilech, and he was going to leave. Omar, he said, Ilan, Ilan, just like we had before, Rachav, Rachav, it's a Lashem Chiba. Ilan, Ilan, Bamevarechacha, how can I bless you? There's nothing for me to bless you, you have it already. If I'm going to tell you that she you perisecha mesukin, I'll give you a bracha that your fruit should be sweet. No, harei perisecha mesukin, they are already sweet. She ate silchanov. I'm going to give you a bracha that your shade should be pleasant. You already have that harei silchanov. If I'm going to bless you, say hey amasamayim everes tachtecha, that water should flow under you. Harei amasamayim everes tachtecha. So what is the only bracha left, which is really the greatest blessing of all? The last line in the Amid, Ella, Yehir Atzayim, may it be God's will, Shekol Netiyoy Shenoitim Mimcha, that all of the shoots that are planted from you, all of the seeds that will be planted from you, Davav, that they should grow up to be just like you. Yiyu Kamoischa. So Af Atah concluded, Rab Yitzchak, to Rav Nachman, I'm going to bless you, Rav Nachman. He praised the student. In the Torah, had a Torah. Or the way the Bach says, had a Yeshlech Torah. I'm reading inside the Bach. Im le Gedula, had a Yeshlech Gedula. 
אם לא כבד, יש לך כבד. ואם באושר, יש לך אושר. ואם בבנים, יש לך בנים. וואו, זה טבח. Let's read inside the Gemara's version more, more brief, but everything is included in it. In the Torah, the Torah. In the Oishra, the Oishra. In the Banim, the Banim. By the way, the Bach isn't only adding, but there's a question and sequence of the Seder, like what's greater, what's not as great, v'chulei. Ela, so Rab Yitzchak concluded, Yehi Ratzayin, Sheyiu Tzatzoi Meyecha, Kemoyscha, that all of your offsprings should be just like you. Like Rashi says, Betoira, Ula Oishar and Vechavayid. Gewaldig, God willing to be continued.